Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this video, we're going to have a look at the performance of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Uh, the iQOO 11 was the first smartphone which had the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So I was very curious, how does it compare to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1? This is the S22 Ultra and the Snapdragon 8 Gen Plus 1, which I feel was a very good chipset. Uh, this is the Motorola uh, Edge 30 Ultra. So we'll have a look at them and see uh, how they perform actually, uh, because uh, I feel uh, this is a very important chip. Again, guys, there's no way a review of this one. That will take time because I'm still testing it. But I wanted to check the raw performance and I have now used this phone for the last couple of days. So I'll give you my opinion. What do I feel? Okay, first uh, I ran was uh, Geekbench 5. And let's start from the uh, snap. Let me just lower the brightness. Always, yeah, okay. Uh, hopefully you can see it a lot clearer now. Yeah, with the lower brightness, it's easily visible. I think this I have to increase a little bit. Yeah. Okay, we got a single core score of 1203. This is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 uh, that is on the S22 Ultra. Obviously, this has the lowest score. Uh, Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, this is on the Motorola. We got a significantly higher, about almost 100 points more. And here, I was surprised, this one also got almost about 130, 140 points more. So single core, definitely the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is faster. Considerably, even with uh, if we compare with the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, which I feel was one of the best processors by Qualcomm uh, produced last year. Uh, now, this was surprising. Uh, this is on auto brightness, I think so, guys. That's why. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Multi core, we got a score of 3293. And even if we compare with the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, we see a huge difference here 4166. Uh, and even the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 had the heating issues. Now, if we compare it with the uh, Gen 2, which is on this iQ 11, here also we see a huge difference in the score. So definitely in raw performance, uh, the Snapdragon 8 uh, Gen 2 is faster than even the 8 Plus 1 uh, Gen 1. I didn't expect that the performance difference will be this much. But to give you an idea, I also ran Antu 2. So let's look at the scores of Antu 2. So okay, here is the Antu 2. So let's, I had the run. So let's look at them. And let's start with the uh, Snapdragon 8 uh, Gen 1 that is on the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. We got a score of 8 uh, lakhs, uh, 84,142. Uh, again, uh, important thing, again, I also want you guys to note is the temperature increase that I noticed. And we know that the Snapdragon 8 uh, Gen was not a cool chip. It used to heat when stressed and we noticed that it rose by 8.2 uh, degrees uh, Celsius when I was actually running this benchmark. So uh, the Snapdragon 8 uh, Plus Gen 1, this is on the uh, Moto, uh, did significantly better as you can see, 8,84. This is 1,55,000. Uh, but the big uh, difference is that temperature increase was only 5 degrees Celsius compared to the, uh, what do you say, uh, Samsung, which was 8.2. And uh, I can say that the 8 Plus Gen 1, uh, apart from the performance, ran a lot cooler. And that is the reason that we are seeing this difference. Okay, uh, moving to the IQ. Uh, and uh, if I go over here, and uh, if you look at the score, yes, obviously this got the highest score that is 1,26,000, almost 2, uh, two lakh uh, more compared to the uh, Snapdragon 8 Plus uh, Gen 1. So yeah, the IQ got almost 2 lakh uh, more score compared to the 8 Plus Gen 1. Uh, but one thing to note is that uh, in terms of the temperature increase, the IQ, I was expecting that it will do even better than the Motorola, but that was not the case. As you see, the temperature increase was 6.7 degrees Celsius, whereas on the Moto, it was just 5 degrees Celsius. And I think so. this is not because of the chip. I think so. this, this is because of the cooling on the IQ 11. And if you notice, the back is also that faux leather kind of a th uh, thing. So it doesn't dissipate the heat uh, as well as the Motorola actually did, I felt. So I feel in temperature and day-to-day -day activities, I would say uh, the IQ didn't feel very warm, but when I was uh, obviously run running the benchmarks and stuff, it, yes, felt warm, but in daily activities, no. Unlike the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 smartphones, the S22 Ultra also, you know, when you stress it, it comes, becomes warm. Another thing that I noticed is that we might also see a battery life increase with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 smartphones. Uh, for example, 
on the S22 Ultra uh, with my regular usage, I used to get a SOT of about five to a max of about five and a half hours. That increased considerably if you see my review of the, uh, what do you say, Moto H30 Ultra. Here I was getting a SOT of anywhere about eight to about even uh, sometimes it touched nine hours, which is a big improvement, I would say. And that is something that again, I'm noticing even on the Ico, the battery life I'm getting on the Ico is even slightly better compared to the Moto. So that means in terms of battery efficiency, also the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is much better, way better compared to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. So definitely I would say this year coming forward, this is just the first phone with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 that we are seeing in the market. We will be seeing a lot more phones coming with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. And I finally feel for the Android world this year, we will be seeing finally pretty good flagship because what I have noticed in the past couple of years, uh, for example, if we talk, uh, talk about even the Snapdragon 888 and the 888 Plus, uh, they were hitting too much. I felt the last good chip that uh, Qualcomm had made was the Snapdragon 870. It didn't heat up that much and had good performance. It went down the hill with the Snapdragon 888 and even 888 Plus had heating issues. And yes, uh, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 also heated up a little bit. It didn't heat up as much as the 888 Plus, but did heat up. Finally, Qualcomm started solving that issue with the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. And now I feel uh, we are back to one of the uh, better chips from uh, Qualcomm, that is the Snapdragon 8 uh, Gen 2. So I'm looking forward to more smartphones coming with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. And I feel uh, this year we'll have very good Android flagships that not only get very good battery life, but also do not heat uh, as much as compared to some of the older Android flagships. So what do you guys feel about this? I'm actually looking forward to some other smartphones launching with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. I'm hoping uh, Samsung is going to be coming out with the S23 series. Those will be using the, uh, uh, what do you say, Snapdragon Gen 2 chipset. I'm also looking towards Motorola to see because again, yes, I go though it's good. This is the first smartphone in India with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, but I don't think so. This is the full performance because it has a little bit of bloatware and stuff like that. But anyways, what do you feel about um, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset? Would love to know your thoughts about the same. And guys, as I've told you, I'm still testing this smartphone. So hopefully by next week or something, I'll post its uh, review. So again, if you're uh, looking for that, stay tuned. Anyways, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. This is Ranjit and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, guys.